We are starting things off taking a live look at the road conditions this morning from the Krem2 Storm Tracker. You're taking a look right now at Regal right now where you could see snow covered roads after we saw a light dusting of snow overnight, but it start to, started to taper off early this morning. We'll have a full look at your weather forecast in just minutes. Well, hey there friends, good morning to you. It is 5 a.m. here on a Friday. Welcome to Up With Krem, I'm Tim Pham. Well, this morning we do have a few school closings and delays to get right to. Lynn Ritzville Cooperative Schools is on remote learning today, while Mary Walker School District is closed. There are multiple schools on a two hour delay, so let's get right to the list. Davenport, Sprague, Lamont and Harrington School Districts are on a two hour delay this morning. And here's a few more. Almira Cooley Heartline, St. John Endicott Cooperative Schools, Moses Lake School District and Warden School District, as well as the Wilbur School Districts, all on a two hour delay this morning. So all of these school closings and delays are also scrolling there at the bottom of your screen. We'll keep you updated right here on Up With Creme if anything changes. All right, this morning we're getting a look at the weather forecast with Nicole Hernandez in for meteorologist Thomas Patrick this morning. And Nicole, things have kind of quieted down over the early morning hours this morning. Good morning. Good morning. They sure have. We're looking at just some kind of more calm of a morning weather, but we're really the calm in between two different storms. So right now you can see on radar not too much happening. We do have the potential for just a few small scattered snow showers here and there, but they'll likely clear out pretty quickly. The people who are going to be seeing uh, the most of the rest of the snow through the morning is going to be Wallace, but again, that clears out very quickly through the next few hours. Then we look forward to the rest of our day dries out. Most of our Friday is going to look pretty clear as we wait for this second system to move in for Saturday. So as we look forward, this is Friday evening. You can see that system that we're waiting for for Saturday already has hit the central Washington area at this point. And then as we move through Friday night into early Saturday morning hours, that's when we start to see the bulk of the snow hit us for Saturday. So again, we're in between two storms right now. What that puts us at, we're still under winter weather advisory from yesterday uh, in parts of our area. Those are starting to expire. Those were supposed to be until noon uh, today, but you can see some of them already expiring. We were under the, them in Spokane, Coeur d'Alene area just uh, 20 minutes ago. Now those are gone. They've expired early. Some places still sticking with that until noon today. And then a winter storm warning start going to effect tonight into Saturday as well. Taking a look though across our area, we're still dark. It's still early and it's cold. We've got some winds with southwest winds at nine miles per hour right now and 26 degrees across our region. Cold pretty much much everywhere. 26 here in Spokane, 11 in Wenatchee, 21 in Moses Lake, 30 in Coeur d'Alene, and 32 over in Sandpoint. We aren't going to warm up all that much today, so keep a look at that for your roads. We are going to stick with those slushy road conditions and icy road conditions through most of our day with 30 degrees here at 5 and then by 1 hitting a high of about 33 degrees. Communities around Spokane and Spokane County still have a thick layer of ice on the ground from last week's storm. Krem 2's Janelle Finch is checking in on neighborhoods and found out what some neighbors had to say about the progress. With more snow on the way, some people are wondering if it will cause more problems for streets still covered in last week's slush and ice. The city's top priority roads are main arterials. Streets like Regal on the South Hill and Monroe near Shadel are clear. But once you turn off onto side roads, that's when things get a bit slippery. Brian Annanson says he's lived in the inland northwest for 12 years. He says the city's snowplow response has slowed over the last decade. And when streets don't get plowed, he says it can snowball into causing more problems. The road in front of my house is still covered in snow. Crestline was covered not only in snow, but uh, because... Uh, it wasn't plowed for a few days after we had the major snowstorm, uh, got covered in a layer of really slick ice. And then when we had the fog, we had some freezing rain, it really became treacherous. If you feel like your street hasn't been plowed, you can request a service at 311. In Spokane, Janelle Finch, Crumb 2 News. We also have an update on a story we brought you as breaking news on Monday. The two washed up plows that were hit and taken off out of service are being repaired right now. Take a look. 
I got an inside look at the maintenance facility yesterday and you could see this is that truck that was actually rear ended. The Washington Department of Transportation tweeted out that both plows are at the mechanics right now and their repairs should be finished by early next week. So one of those plows was seriously damaged by a drunk driver. The other was that driver traveling too closely. As a reminder, as plows are out on the roads this morning, be aware when they are near you on the roads and give them plenty of room. Moscow police are still looking to speak to the owner of a white Hyundai Elantra seen driving near the home where four University of Idaho students were killed last month. In an update from police, Chief James Fry says they have already received so many calls into their tip line, they are now directing calls to an FBI call center. Police are also clarifying the car they are looking for is not the same one seen on recently released body camera footage from an unrelated event the same night the students were killed. So the body cam image that um, is out there from an officer who was on a call with the alcohol fence does have a white vehicle in it. This is not the vehicle that we are looking for. Authorities are still looking for a white Hyundai Elantra that looks just like this one. They do believe whoever was in that car that night could have critical information about this case. So if you have any information, the tip line number is 208-883-7180, or you can email any tips to the Moscow Police Department to that email address there at the bottom of your screen. The time now is 5.06. Let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. Spokane police telling Krem 2 they have arrested a juvenile suspect in connection with robberies in downtown Spokane on Wednesday. The first robbery took place in Riverfront Park. Four people tried to rob someone at gunpoint. 30 minutes later, a second victim was approached by two people who demanded they hand over their personal belongings. One suspect then swung a knife at the victim, causing minor injuries. Police are still searching for the other suspects. Fruitland police say they did not find the remains of five-year-old Michael Vaughn in or around a second home they just finished searching. Six days ago, Fruitland Police Chief J.D. Huff announcing investigators would be digging through the yard of the home neighboring the one they already searched through the last month. They didn't find anything in either of those locations. They do not believe Michael was in any other nearby yards. A judge set a new joint trial for Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. They are accused of murdering Vallow's two children and Daybell's late wife, Tammy Daybell. Attorneys argue that the two should not be tried together. They asked for Daybell's trial start date to be earlier than October of 2023. Vallow's attorneys asked for a February 2023 start date, saying she has not waived her right to a speedy trial. Ultimately, the judge set the joint trial date for April 3rd, 2023 in Ada County. Congratulations, welcome home. Oh, what a wonderful thing. This is a Christmas gift for the ages as a local family were handed the keys to their new home. I love this so much. Habitat for Humanity Spokane welcomed this family of four to a renovated home in the West Central neighborhood. So emotions, of course, were very high as the keys were handed over to the new homeowners. This is uh, a pleasure to so good for us because uh, we we our income is not enough to get a buy house for the lawn. We really get us. This is habitat helps us to get our dream house. We are so excited. We are so happy. Mm, their family's lives would be changed forever. That's for sure. This home was actually a part of the derelict housing acquisition and home ownership program and was made possible through a partnership between Habitat for Humanity and the city of Spokane. They all work to revitalize neighborhoods and increase uh, home ownership opportunities for those who earn 80% below the area income.